Good afternoon and welcome to MAE 106 Discrete Mathematics with Probability. I'm Richard Kohar and this is Lecture 3, Logical Connectives. I hope everyone is able to hear what I'm saying. If so, make sure you just say, give a thumbs up in the chat so that I can, everything is good. Excellent. Good. Thank you. Okay, so that's good. Good day to everyone. Excellent. So um, the thing I wanted to first off, I just wanted to recall from our previous lecture. So like from last time. I had done an exercise where I had talked about 2.1. 1.2.1, and this was J, and I had said that the Toronto Maple Leafs won the next Stanley Cup. Now, I had said that this was not a proposition because it was uh, currently unknown and it can't be determined with absolute certainty. And this is what I had uh, taken on a probabilistic viewpoint. Probabilistic viewpoint. So that's me. And I usually work in a lot with probability. But in, in logic, they take on a different kind of viewpoint, and this is what they call logical determinism. So, and what this viewpoint says. Uh, is that the is that a proposition about the future is either true or it's negative is true So there's, uh, this is was something that was considered since the ancients, since Aristotle's time, and they had considered these uh, kind of uh, future propositions. And so what their viewpoint was that the future is deterministic, that there exists something or someone who knows what this would be. Okay, so you could think of that as an oracle or a being, but for logic, uh, they believed that the proposition was either true or or false about the the future. Okay, so that's all good. So I was wrong because I had taken the wrong viewpoint. So this is actually it is a proposition. Okay. Now again, you don't have to worry about the actual truth value we were just trying to determine if it was a proposition so what was interesting was things like um, there is life on Saturn this is a proposition as well. Whether or not that we are able to determine it, that's irrelevant, that th there is a truth that can be assigned to that. Someone or something knows. And so that's what the determinism is. 
Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, um, we can start to look at logical connectives. And what these things do is they connect the propositions together. So we have lots of different words that we can use. Uh, the first thing that we'll, you know, we usually come across is like, and we have or, and when we start combining these together, we have propositions. Um, these themselves can start to form, uh, we had compound propositions, and we can look at what those values, or those truth values would correspond to. Okay, so we'll start off with the, the simple one first, which is the negation. Okay. And the sign that we use is this uh, stick, and then it goes down. So it's a line, and then a little, you know, downward tick at the bottom. And so we would say P. So, and this denotes not P. We also use like little letters like P, Q, R to denote the proposition. So here is P is a proposition. Mm -hmm. And so something like um, something like Julie drinks coffee. that if I took the negation of it, Julie does not drink coffee. Okay. And what we'll do then is I'll illustrate this with what we call a truth table. So. So the truth table would be, okay, so we have P and not P. So I just have um, two possibilities for P. It can either be true or false. And then if I take the negation of this, it flips it. So in here I have Drew, Julie drinks coffee. And then the negation of it would be uh, she does not. So here would be P is true, then the opposite of it would be false. Similarly, if I have she doesn't drink coffee, okay, well that means this is true. So all this does is that the negation flips it from just P to not P. So it changes it from T to F and vice versa from F to T. Okay, and that's what we call a truth table. The truth table consists of all of the uh, possibilities that you can assign to the propositions. And this was invented by a man, well, it was some of the earliest evidence that we can find was from 1893 by Charles Pierce, who was an American logician. And, okay, so I better ask, is everyone okay with the negation? All it does is it basically flips T to false and false to true. It just changes or flips. Okay, good. Then the next thing that we could do is what's called the conjunction.
are there any exceptions to negation? No, there's no exceptions. When we write a truth table like this, it's exhaustive. So there's no exceptions to that. Okay. Okay. The conjunction. Keep an eye on the chat. If you guys do have questions, I can always be trying to keep an eye on it. Okay, the conjunction. This is for and. So, usually like and. And so what we would have is if I have two propositions, say I have P and this symbol, which is like a little carrot top, chevron, it's P and Q. That denotes P and Q. So what this says is, um, Both P and Q have to be true. For P and Q to be true. Otherwise, it's false. So let's say Yeah. Okay. So let's 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 do like this down here. So we'll say that uh, I'll let P be Angela. She passed logic. We'll say Angela. Passed calculus. Then we'll look at the combined one. So this is just my little example that I'm using right here. So let's say, for instance, that she passed logic, so this is true, and let's say that she failed calculus. So what does this mean right here? This statement, this says that Angela passed logic and calculus. So, you can think of that as Angela passed logic and calculus. Well, she passed logic and failed calculus, which means that this statement, that she passed both logic and calculus, has to be what? Exactly false. Excellent. So, that was just our little example, but we can actually fill out this table. Just knowing just this idea that P and Q have to be true for P and Q to be true, otherwise it's false, I can actually come up with all the possibilities and that's this is kind of the truth table for the AND.
Okay, so again, I have uh, two propositions, and each of these will have two outcomes. So I can enumerate them. I have I'm going to have four possibilities. So I'll write it uh, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, and there's all four possibilities. Now, again, it, it has to for this to be true. Both of them have to be true. So I have true and true. So this is true. This one is true and this one is false, which means that P and Q has to be false. Same thing for this third line. One of these is false. And then lastly, I have false and false. Well, that's still not going to give me anything, so that's false. So this is the truth table for the conjunction. Now, I keep using the word and, but there's lots of words that I could be using. You know, there's synonyms for it. So I could have, but, yet, although, even though, and so on. Okay. So that's the conjunction. Let's do the disjunction. I can have or. Okay. So what this one says is that I have P and this little V here. V and I have it, there's the Q. And what that says, this is P or Q or both. Sometimes in legal terms, they came up with this idea of writing and stroke or. So I can use my same idea again. What this would say is um, at least one of P or Q must be true for P or Q to be true. Okay? So if I use that example again, I'll just kind of draw a little line here. Same thing, just kind of following what we did previously right up here. So again, P is logic, and Q is past calculus.
what this would say is if I did P, Q, and then I had P or Q, so this would be asking Angela passed logic or calculus or both. So let's say that uh, very similar to this one up here, let's say she passed logic but failed calculus. Then if I asked, Angela passed logic or calculus or both, well, she passed at least one of them. So one of them is true, which means that this statement is true. Okay, so then the truth table for this, for this disjunction, again, I can write out the truth table for it. So again, it's like listing all the possibilities for assigning true or false to these two propositions. So again, there's going to be four possibilities in total. So So again, at least one of them has to be true. So both of these are true, so this statement is true, that proposition. I have at least one again, so this is true. At least one is true, so this is true. Both of these are false, so this doesn't qualify then to be true, so it has to be false, and that's it. That's our truth table for the disjunction. one. So we've done the conjunction, we've done the disjunction, we've done the negation. The uh, Let's see, next one that I have is the exclusive disjunction. So with the exclusive disjunction, we use, uh, what this is, is it's P or Q, but not both. And what we usually use is that V symbol and we put a little line under it. So. That's what this denotes. So I'll have P with a little V with a line under it, Q, denotes this. So we can also express this as so just kind of reading that out I have P 
or q and I have a but I can think of that as and and not both so and not p and q Okay, so what this says is, you know, the idea of using an exclusive disjunction would be something like, let's say that this month is September, and I could have this month. It's October. Well, we we could say that uh, what this would say is like if I want P or so this is the exclusive or Q means. month is either September or October but not both Okay, same thing again. We can create a true table for this. So I have P, Q, and then P exclusive or. And just again, I can write out all the possibilities for the two propositions. So in this case that it has to be one or the other but not both. So here is the case where I have a true and a false, so it's one or the other, so this is good. I have, again, this one's false, this one's true, so at least, sorry, only one of them is true, so that's true. And the rest are false, because I can't have both, and I need to have one. So, perfect. Okay, so the next one that we can do is what we call the implication. And usually implications have the form of if, and then we'll have like there's some sort of blank, then finish that. And we use what uh, we use the arrow. So we have like just a forward arrow. So if I wrote something like P. I have a right arrow, Q, 
you. This denotes if p, then q. So what's kind of nice about this is that that has some sort of visual direction. So if P happens, then Q will happen next. So for instance, you could think of, let's say, if it's raining outside, So then, maybe we'll switch to a different, then I'll bring an umbrella. So there's lots of ways of phrasing an implication. Um, so, you know, I could say if P then Q, which is what we have done up here. Uh, you may hear me say P implies Q. I could say Q if P. So I can flip them like that. That's perfectly fine in English. I could be a little bit more wordier. I could say P is a sufficient condition. For Q, or yeah, for Q. I could say P only if Q. Could also say Q is a necessary condition. For P. Okay. So what I usually do when I'm teaching implication and what people have found to be helpful is to think of it as there's a cause and then there's an effect. Okay, cause and then effect. So what we can do is to come up with a truth table for the implication and thinking about the cause and effect. What I'm going to say is here's my example that I usually give. So I'll say P is I stepped in poison ivy. Q is, I have a rash. So again, you can be thinking of it as poison ivy, which is the cause, and the effect is a rash. So there's four combinations, or four ways that I can uh, 
have with this. So I can have my four ways. And then we'll sit and consider each case. So for this one, this means that I stepped in poison ivy and I got a rash. So, you know, I, I, I fell in it, I got the oil on my skin, caused an irritation, I start scratching, it's a rash. So this is true. What's the next one that we could do? Okay, so this is true. Let's look at this one. Let's say that I didn't step in poison ivy, but I have a rash. Is this still possible? Yes. Okay. The reason for this is even though I didn't step in poison ivy, Uh, is the pen going to run out? Even though I didn't step, of course. <laughs> Even though I didn't step in poison ivy, I can still get a rash. You know, it could be anything. Laundry soap. I don't know, itchy sweater, it's still possible. So again, I can have the cause not be there, but I can still have the effect. If there's no, no ivy, no poison ivy, and there's no rash, that's possible as well. So that's true as well. But I fell into the poison ivy, I stepped in it, I, my skin made contact with it, and I didn't get a rash, that's very unlikely. It's very unlikely that you didn't get something. It's a very strong irritant. So this would be false. Is everyone okay with that and that example? So this is, can you explain four again? Oh, okay. So over in here, this would be, okay. Yes, yes, can I, okay, I'll just explain four again. So um, I didn't, step in so I didn't step in the poison ivy and I didn't get a rash so this is true this is possible Okay. Okay, so I did four. So that's what it is. There's a cause and effect. If this cause shows up, then you're going to get the effect. If that cause doesn't show up, you could still have that effect still happen. This is very uh, tricky for some people. And a lot of people make mistakes on that. So I would say that this is something to be very careful of. And this is something you will have to memorize.
Okay, perfect. Confused. Okay. Okay, what else? What's the next thing I can do? Is there practice sheets anywhere? Well, I'm, I mean, I guess any sheet could be a practice sheet. All you would have to do is just write them out. You will have to write these out eventually on a test as well. So actually, this would probably be a good time to do a summary. Okay, so let's see, I did P, Q, let's do, uh, we have the negation, which is, let's do not P. I also did uh, P or Q. We did P and Q. So this would be the or, this is the and, this is the negation. We had the exclusive or, and then lastly, we had the implication. So you would just set this up yourself then. <clears throat> and so you would do, there's uh, two propositions, so there's going to be four lines. So for the negation, all we do is we flip it from one truth value to the other. So we'll have uh, for not P, I have a uh, false, false. Here's true, and here's true. We have the or. So again, remembering what we did for the or, this was that at least one of them, one of the propositions must be true for it to be true. So what I do is I look down this one right here. So this is true and true. Oops, and there goes the pen cap. The, so true and true. This table you are doing is re in relation, no. No, this is just a summary table right now. This is, so this is a summary. And so right here is the truth table for the implication. So right here, that's, you'll have to memorize this, and this is the truth table. For the implication. Okay. Very
there's just a slight delay so there's about a 20 second delay so hopefully everyone is okay so okay so let's just summarize this again so again with the p or q then it's just w at least one has to be true so true and true that's true true and false there's at least one so that's true I have false and true so that's at least true and false and false that's false and so just quickly checking yes this is exactly what we had written down previously so that's good the and so for the and both of them have to be true otherwise it's false so true and true so the first one's true the second one's true that's true both of them have to be true and it fails i have one of those that's false so this is false here's another one they're not both true so this is false both of them are false so this is false for sure and so there is our true table and it matches so this is good let's do the exclusive disjunction so with this it's only one of them has to be true so true and true this is false then uh, here's one of them that's at least that's true that's good one of them is true and now both of these are false so this is false okay and now for the implication and we can think of it in terms of the poison ivy so I stepped in poison ivy I got a rash this is possible I stepped in poison ivy and I didn't get a rash no no that's not gonna happen I wish I didn't step in poison ivy but I have a rash that's still that's possible that's true I didn't step in poison ivy and I didn't get a rash yes that's a possible case as well so that's the implication and with uh, two minutes remaining we'll just kind of go over the order of precedence precedence there we go so it goes uh, brackets then the negation then the and the or and the implication the Q doesn't matter at all with the neg P exactly because I'm not um, I'm not looking at it because it's just the negation of P if I wanted to do the negation of Q I can just write this over here so negation of Q I just flip these values here so I'm just looking at just the Q column so this becomes from T to F F to T T to F and F to T okay so the order of precedence so this helps us to kind of um, parse a statement if there are no brackets so for instance I had not P or Q implies P and R or S so how would we put brackets around this well the first thing that we see okay so we, we looked for the brackets there isn't any then the next thing that we can add okay so what I see here is I can add brackets around this P, not P so there's what I was using here that's the order then the next thing I can look for is the and I scan through here and I come across this symbol right here so I can put the brackets around there and the next one that I see is the or that's the next in the order of precedence so I see an or here and an or here so I can put brackets around here and here and the same thing over here
Yes. I would kind of lump those together. That's a very good question, Alex. And if the order isn't, if you would like one order over the other, again, you should add um, parentheses to help the person understand it better. And then lastly, we have just the arrow, which is the implication. So again, the order of precedence. So if you didn't put any of those parentheses, then we would read it like this. And if you want it to be read differently, then you can add your own. OK, and that is the end of the class. Are there any questions before we sign off for today? If you are watching this in the future, and you are having questions, uh, the chat, again, that's kind of the advantage of what's R. Oh, in this case, I, I, so in this case, I can have letters. So P, Q, and R are propositions. When will you upload our practice work? That's a good question. Uh, we are just coordinating that, and I will upload. I will upload some questions for you. And of course, you can always just look at the uh, end of the section, and there's exercises, and the solutions are at the back of the book. Okay. And again, for the people that are watching this in the future, on a future date or a later date, um, if you have questions, feel free to send me an email. The chat feature doesn't work because it's <laughs> I'm not actually there. So uh, send me an email, and um, I'll post these notes on the Moodle page. Okay, have a good night, everyone. Have a great weekend.